Hi guys, welcome to Sportitude. My name is Josh, and on the table right in front of me, I have got the ASICS Super Blast. Now, this shoe had a global launch in November um, in conjunction with the New York Marathon. So, usually when a brand launches a new shoe, they roll it out Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. We all get it at the same time, and away you go. However, things are a little bit different at ASICS at the moment, and more due to the fact that they couldn't keep up with the production demands of this shoe. So, they had to do a Northern Hemisphere launch. And little old Australia and New Zealand down here, we have to wait a few months. So this shoe won't be coming out in our market till February to potentially March in 2023. Hopefully we can get a little bit sooner, but um, good things do come to those who wait. And this shoe here is, as I touched on, it's a new shoe. It's very exciting. It's pretty niche. And what we're going to do is we're going to dive into where it's placed in the market, the competitors that sit in the same conversation as the Super Blast, profile the foot type and the runner that could be considering this shoe. And as we always do, give you all that information at home to who knows, maybe make this your next shoe purchase. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay, before we jump into all the juicy parts of this shoe review, let's just talk about a couple of key uh, key factors. So what foot type should be considering the Super Blast? Well, it is neutral in design. So what we talk about there is there's no medial support system as such that's going to really cater for that severe to over pronator. And on the flip side, if you happen to be a mild supernator, neutral foot type or a mild over pronator, that's kind of where we would be sitting this shoe. The other thing about this shoe, which you need to know and where it sits in the whole rotation. Now, unless it's a racing shoe, which is really specifically targeted for racing, every other category being speed work, mileage, there's a kind of a few gray areas within that conversation. And the Super Blast is no different. It is a max cushion shoe. However, it's really light in its offering and it has plenty of cushioning. So I've got no doubt that there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna enjoy this shoe for easy days, for mileage out on the road, but also it's snappy enough, light enough, and it has enough push off your toes that someone could use it for some quicker runs, some progressive runs, and may even be able to session in this shoe too. So it does have a few multiple uses, which I think is great. And that's why I think this is such an exciting shoe because it's not really specifically targeting one category of running. It does bridge out over a couple. And I myself might even throw this shoe on my foot for a half marathon or two. So I'm not ruling out the fact you can't race in it. Um, it's certainly, yeah, it talks to a lot of runners out there, which is exciting. Okay, jumping straight to the outsole of this shoe. So you can see holding up the shoe um, to you guys at home, there is Reasonable amount of coverage and with the rubber on offer and it's ASICS A-H-A-R rubber. That's their really durable compound rubber. There's not a lot of offer underneath the foot. It looks very similar to what we had seen with Nova Blast 1 and Nova Blast 3 where they had that little pod in the middle part of your forefoot filling out that outsole configuration. And the border of the shoe, as you can see, it called out by that darker grey uh, rubber, which is again just there to protect the asset, which is the midsole in this shoe. I think they've got it right. If they had a little bit more rubber potentially filling out the forefoot, it would be probably a little bit bottom heavy through the front half. And same thing goes the back of the shoe through here. So I like the fact that we've only just got enough rubber in these high abrasive areas to provide ample amount of protection for that midsole, but not overcomplicate things and make this shoe too heavy. Okay, jumping to the top of the shoe, let's talk all things upper. They have got an engineered mesh. It's an engineered adaptive asymmetrical mesh on offer. So what that technically means is it's gonna conform the foot in all those really important areas. So first thing I like to call out is the middle of the foot through here, which is what we classify as the saddle. So generally speaking, uh, if you get that part of your shoe wrong in a lighter shoe, it can make things really complicated and quite uncomfortable because more often than not, when you have a lighter shoe on your foot, a lot of runners will like to get up onto that forefoot if possible, but more often than not landing on their midfoot. Therefore, if you don't have enough depth through the saddle or the navicular region of your foot, it can create a little bit of pressure, therefore making the shoe quite uncomfortable. I like what they've done with regards to the depth on offer. I like what they've done with regards to the width and we'll touch on the widths at the end of this review. However, as you come through to the forefoot as well, you've got enough uh, space to allow your forefoot to splay out if you're a D width in men's and a B width in ladies. However, you've got the appropriate amount of depth through the toe box as well. Um, having a conversation with one of our shoe fitters here, uh, Ollie and myself were t discussing that we like the amount of toe box room on offer with the Super Blast. It kind of reminds us a little bit of Glide Ride version one in regards to the upper, in 
reference to the width and the depth. That was a really nice comfortable fit up top and obviously they altered what they did underneath the foot but if we're just talking about all things upper it's a very similar fit and feel and function up top which I believe is a good thing. And just coming back to the heel counter of this shoe, obviously we have a pull tab and for those of you that know me I love a pull tab but internal heel counter on offer at the back through here so again giving that calcaneus a nice solid lockdown but they don't need a lot of plastic construction at the back. The reason being is if I hold the shoe through here, you'd obviously see that that midsole wraps quite a lot up around the lateral, the central part and the medial side of that heel. So your actual heel sits considerably deeper. So probably in and around where my finger sits just here on that medial side. So there's a lot of depth on offer. So you're getting almost that external heel counter construction from the midsole wrap, as well as that internal construction control, which is gonna give the back half of your foot just the right amount of support and stability. And obviously I do like to call out the comfort factor of this shoe, a little bit of memory foam, a little bit of that uh, nice soft material and offer around your collar. So therefore when you step into this shoe, it does feel premium and it does feel incredibly comfortable as well. Okay, let's jump to the midsole because I know you've been sitting there, you've had a couple of sips of your coffee and you're waiting for me to get to this part of the review because this is where all the excitement happens. So no surprises, this does fall into that max cushioned or max stacked category. And how so? We've got 45 and a half mils in the heel. We have 37 and a half in the forefoot for that variance of eight millimeters. So there is a lot of shoe. And let's talk about the two cushioning elements we have on offer. So we've got Flight Foam Turbo, which is the mango colored part of this midsole. And underneath we have Flight Foam Plus. Now, that cushioning system is the snappier of the two foams. The Flight Foam Turbo has been rolled out over your um, Metaspeed Skies and your Metaspeed Edges, so we're kind of familiar with that feel and that compound. So we have on offer with the Super Blast that can, a, a really new take on how to execute a high-performing midsole. So a lot of this midsole is, as I touched on, the FF Turbo and that lighter, slightly snappier foam being the FF Plus, which sits underneath that turbo. It almost works in unison together. So this shoe here, as we touched on at the start of this intro, we're not really too concerned about what happens on that X and Y axis. This shoe is all about that Z axis. We've got to get you landing and through to your toe off part of your gait cycle as smooth and as efficiently as possible. And how they do that? Well, using those two cushioning systems, a relatively stiff construction. There is no plate in this shoe whatsoever. So you're not relying on a, a nylon plate or a carbon plate. It is purely and simply all fixing and, and put together into this midsole package to provide enough cushioning, but a snappy, very stable roll on toe off. The other thing I'd like to call out with reference to this midsole as it is a max stacked shoe, it isn't crazy soft underneath the foot. Now, um, I'm sure someone's gonna put this on downstairs, it, uh, Sportitude running, and you probably put it on um, wherever you are around the world. Now, when I say, it's not crazy cushioned. That's totally in respect to where you've come from. So if I'm comparing this shoe to, let's say, a Super Comp from New Balance or maybe even throwing in the Bondi X from Hoka, they're very similar shoes, all three. However, the midsole does perform rather differently. And I'll touch on that at the end of this review where I talk um, all things comparison across those three shoes. But all in all, you've got a really stable ride for the amount of stack underneath your foot and a really smooth transition. I am all about what this shoe is doing in the midsole and it's gonna go uh, quite well, as I touched on, for anyone who's wanting to get out in the, out in the road roll the legs over for some easy Ks or you're keen to pick the pace up, it's gonna help you do that just fine. Talking to the men's size nine here, it comes in at 239 grams. So in respect to the other shoes we've talked about, Supercomp and Bondi X, it is considerably lighter than both of those. Now, the Bondi X is getting up around that 300 grams and the Supercomp trainer sits just under that. So there's a considerable amount of difference around sort of, uh, sort of 50 to 60 grams variance between those shoes and where this shoe sits. And that is quite a lot, especially for that on-foot experience. The other um, key statistics we need to talk about, which we touched on, is the stack height. Of course, it's a 45 mil on the heel, 37.5 in the forefoot for that offset of eight millimeters. So jumping to what I like about this shoe, where it sits, and those other shoes which I touched on previously, um, look, the Super Blast, 
I've been really excited about this shoe for six months now. And thank you very much to ASICS Australia for um, seeding myself and Ollie here at Sportitude a couple of pairs. Um, and we've enjoyed every bit of running in these, collaborating, trying to figure out where this shoe sits. Now, as I touched on, look, I'd have to say Supercomp and Bondi X, pretty similar shoes in regards to what they offer if you're talking about that X and Y axis and more about getting you through off to your release part of your gait cycle. So this shoe here, it's a magnificent execution of engineering without the reliance of a plate. So no carbon plate, no nylon plate, which I touched on. However, it is a nice, rigid, relatively stiff forefoot and you feel every bit of this rocker underneath your foot. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. Again, higher stack, so it's not quite as high as your Prime X from Adidas. If you're those of you are unfamiliar, that is a 50 mil stack height. This is coming in around those mid 40s, but with the amount of shoe underneath your foot, I personally feel it doesn't feel like a 44 and a half mil stack. I'm thinking it probably feels more around that 40 mark. It, it, it still certainly feels like you've got a lot of shoe underneath your foot, but I don't feel like I am being inhibited with regards to how I roll through this shoe by having too much of it underneath my foot. I probably would be cautious um, maybe using it for some faster races. I mean, I wouldn't be leaning towards this shoe specifically for a park run where you might have a little bit of cornering because being that high off the ground and kind of leaning too much in that FF turbo midsole, it might be a little bit unstable. But if you're just literally getting out the door, pointing yourself in a direction and just going, this shoe will be absolutely fantastic. And recently here in Adelaide, we've had some damp weather. We've had rain, we've had dry, we've had all four seasons in about two weeks. And we have tested this shoe across all of those elements. And there is plenty of grip underneath the foot. So that limited amount of AHAR rubber on offer, grab that bitumen, grab that footpath as much as you'd want to. So I was really comfortable, really confident with the amount of grip on offer with this shoe. And as I touched on before, it does sit across a couple of silos. It's going to be a cushion shoe for someone wanting to get out and do those easy runs. I personally like it for those who are probably looking at getting back into some quicker running, some progressive running, maybe recovering some, from some form of injury and need a little bit more protection and stability. This shoe here is going to be absolutely fine for your shorter, quicker days. And I reckon we'll see this shoe even feature on some amateur triathlete's feet for race day. Now, not everyone can tolerate a carbon plated shoe. We've talked about that in a number of shoe reviews over the last few years. However, that really stiff, rigid forefoot has become an extremely popular, almost a search um, feature of a running shoe. And this shoe has it, it just doesn't have it with a plate. So therefore, I reckon we'll see this shoe out in the triathlon circuit for sure. It's gonna cover everything from your Olympic distance right up to your Ironman distance um, for triathletes. And as I touched on, I reckon we'll even see a few of these out on your road races, myself included. I reckon I might push out a half marathon in these, purely based on enjoyment and comfort. So there you have it, guys. That is my take on the ASIC Super Blast. Again, I just want to touch on what I said at the start of this review. Globally, this shoe did launch in November that was more to the Northern Hemisphere, Australia and New Zealand. We have to wait a few months. So come February, March next year, we should have this on our wall and we should be fitting you, the Australian and New Zealand running community. And guys, if you've used this shoe, if you've got some comments some thoughts and theories on what it represents and where it stands, maybe where it's come from with the Nova Blast, let us know in the comment section below. Any other questions related to your shoes or shoe selection, we'd love to hear from you. We love helping you guys all over the world with your running shoe selections. So there you have it, guys. Super Blast. Take care of one another. Happy running. Stay safe. And we will see you out on the road.